From 1972 to 1997, Father Stefano Gobi received interlocutions or messages from the Blessed Virgin Mary regarding the end times. The Marian movement of priests was formed as the instrument chosen by Our Lady to carry her voice to the hearts and souls of her beloved children, a guide for helping them to live the consecration to her Immaculate Heart. In it, she manifests her maternal plan to lead all souls back to Jesus. It is a work of love which the Immaculate Heart of Mary is causing to spring up in the Church today to help all her children to live with trust and filial hope through the painful times of the purification. But why did Our Lady choose Father Gobi? In one passage of the book, the following explanation is given. Our Lady says, I have chosen you because you are the least apt instrument. Thus, no one will say that this is your work. The Marian movement of priests must be my work alone. Through your weakness, I will manifest my strength. Through your nothingness, I will manifest my power. Through this movement, I am calling all my children to consecrate themselves to my heart and to spread everywhere cenacles of prayer. Message of July 16, 1973 But these messages are not only for the priests who are enrolled in the Marian movement of priests, but for us, lay people as well. She explains her role in the end times and gives us a clear understanding of the book of the Apocalypse. The Third Sign Division on the Anniversary of the Apparition at Lourdes Our Lady said, I am your Immaculate Mother. I appeared on earth in the poor grotto of Masibiel in order to point out to you the road you must walk in these difficult times. It is my road, that of purity, of grace, of prayer, of penance. It is the road which my son Jesus has already pointed out to you to lead you all to the Father and his spirit of love. You have within you his own spirit, which causes you to cry out to God as Father because he has shared his divine nature with you. Walk the road of love. Make place within you for the spirit of love which is bringing you in life to be more and more united. Love one another as Jesus has loved you and you will become truly one. Unity is the perfection of love. And so Jesus has desired that his church be one to make of her the sacrament of God's love for men. Today, my Immaculate Heart trembles and is anguished to see the division within the Church. This division, which has penetrated the Church, is the third sign which indicates to you with certainty that the final moment of her painful purification has come. If, in the course of the centuries, the Church has many times been torn by division, which has led many of my children to separate themselves from her, I nevertheless obtain from Jesus the singular privilege of her interior unity. But in these times my adversary has, with his smoke, succeeded in darkening even the light of this divine prerogative of the Church. This interior division is manifesting itself even among the faithful who often set themselves one against the other in an attempt to defend and better promote the truth. Thus the truth is betrayed by even them as the gospel of my son cannot be divided. This interior division sometimes even leads priests to set themselves against priests, bishop against bishops, and cardinals against cardinals. For never before, as in these times, has Satan succeeded in finding his way into their midst, reading asunder the precious bond of their mutual love. This interior division is expressed by the tendency to leave to himself and to abandon, so to speak, the very vicar of Jesus, the Pope, who is a son particularly loved and enlightened by me. My mother's heart is wounded to see how the silence and neglect of my children often envelope the words and actions of the Holy Father, while he is increasingly struck and impeded by his adversaries. Because of this interior division, his very ministry is not sufficiently supported and furthered by this whole church whom Jesus has wanted to be united about the successor of Peter. My motherly heart grieves to see how even some pastors refuse to let themselves 
be guided by his enlightening and trustworthy words. The first way of being separated from the Pope is that of open rebellion. But there is also another way, more subtle and dangerous. It is that of proclaiming one's unity openly, but of dissenting from him interiorly, letting his teaching fall into a word and in practice doing the contrary of what he says. O oh, Church, mystical body of my Jesus, in your painful journey to Calvary you have reached the eleventh station, and you set, see yourselves wretched and torn in your members, which are again nailed to the cross. What must you do, my sons, apostles of my immaculate and sorrowful heart? You must become a hidden seed, ready even to die for the internal unity of the Church. And so I am leading you each day to a very great love for and, and fidelity to the Pope and the Church united to him. For this reason I am now letting you share in the anxiety of my motherly heart. For this reason I am forming you in the her heroism of sanctity and leading you with me up Calvary. Through you also I will be able to help the Church emerge from her painful purification so that in her all the splendor of her restored unity may be manifest to the world.